Good morning, everyone. Bob here, and welcome to Gentle Strength Workout for Seniors Brain Gym. And yes, Brain Gym is a brain body movement program that will help improve your memory, your organization skills, your communication skills, and it'll increase your positive behavior. So we're gonna start with a warm up. You don't need any equipment, just some space and follow along, have fun. It's time for a drink. Warrior one pose. The warm up will be in two parts. The first one is the swim and the second one is the crossovers. Part one, part two, the crossover. This march. The sound's gonna change. Good work, march. Try to stay with the beat. So we're gonna take our elbow on one arm and our knee on one leg, the opposite one, and touch them and alternate. If you can get those legs up nice and high, you won't have to reach down so far with your elbows. Crossovers are very important for your brain. The next thing we're gonna do is touch our hand from one side of our body to the heel on the back side of the other leg, opposite. You're kicking your butt and reaching behind.
and march. So I don't care what leg you use, but we're going to walk forward three and tap, and walk back three and tap. You ready? Let's try it right here. One, two, three, tap. Some of you have done this before when we did the hustle. Just march it. Now we have a V-step. So we step out with one foot, the other one, and back. And we use our arms to make the V. This speed. This lead first, that one. Yes, you really have to concentrate. There's a beat. And a beat. And last one. Arms out. We're going to walk around eight times. To the left. Your right. Or oh, it doesn't matter really which way we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. That's your warm up. The golden eight energy balancing exercises done a little differently. Follow along.
It's time for another drink. Choose a leg. Stand on one foot. Either get your leg nice and high off the ground or just close to the ground just in case you need to put your toe down. Right? Sometimes you have to pull on to things. That's okay. So I'm going to do it without touching anything. One-legged hold. My arms are going to slowly come up, palms first. All the way up to the top. Don't put that foot down. And over my head I touch my palms and then I come back down, pushing down with my palms. Slowly. side when you're ready. So either hold on to something or keep the toe close to the ground and get that other leg off the ground. Just stand there for a sec. And when you're ready, the arm's going to come out and cross over your body. Fingers pointing straight stretched apart. Slowly come back. Now, with those fingers stretching and apart, cross your body with the arm. There it goes. 
Looking into the leg. Other side, so the leg goes out. Keep it nice and straight. When you're ready, look and see where it goes. Twist your upper body. Just a little bit. If you have to hold on, you go right ahead. Good. Now we're going to take our leg and bend it at the knee and place it in front of the other one and do a little squat. And then place it behind and do a little squat. They call these shrimp squats, as some of you know. Just keep your body nice and tall. You can hold on if you want. And as that leg bends here, look down and make sure it doesn't go past your toe. The knee does not go past the toe. It's right in the middle though. Let's try the other side. So one leg comes up, bend it, place it in front, place it behind. Do a little shrimp squat with that supporting leg. Look down to make sure the knee stays over the center of the foot and doesn't go past the toe. Good work. It's time for another drink. So get yourself a chair, not too comfortable. I don't want you to fall asleep on me. And also if it's a hard chair like mine here, wooden, it's easier for you to sit up straight because I want you to sit up nice and tall and make sure your hips are forward a little bit, which will straighten out your back. Shoulders are back down and relaxed, even though we're gonna use our arms, your head is sitting there so that the lobes of your ears are above your shoulders and someone's pulling the top of your head straight up and your chin is sitting on a ledge and it's tucked into your neck like this. Let's just sit here for a sec. We're gonna take a deep breath in through our nose. That'll make our abdomen go out like this because the diaphragm, when you do that, moves down and pushes the organs out. And then we're gonna blow out through our mouth and as we do that, we'll suck in our belly button and the diaphragm will come back up. So don't worry about the diaphragm too much. Just take a deep breath in through your nose and blow out through your mouth. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and blow out through your mouth and make it last a little longer. And one more deeper breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Put your hand on your belly. When you take a deep breath in through your nose, you should feel your belly move. And when you blow out, push your belly in with your hand. Here we go. Switch sides. Good. You need to practice that deep breathing, moving the diaphragm. It goes up and down, pushing the belly in and out. You need to practice that. But it's always in through your nose, out through your mouth. Hold on if you want to feel the expansion of the abdomen. All right. So we're going to tap. It doesn't matter which hand you use, whether you use both hands and the fingers or just one hand or one finger, it doesn't matter. But we're going to tap right where the eyebrow meets the top of the nose, right there, we're gonna tap. And since you have two eyebrows, we can tap both sides, but we're right where the eyebrow meets the nose. And as we tap, we're going to say something positive about ourselves. So I'm going to say, I exercise every morning and it makes me feel wonderful. 
okay? That's right there where the eyebrow meets the nose, right there. Remember, you can use one hand, one finger, a bunch of fingers, one side, the other side, do both sides, whatever you want to do. But make sure you say that positive thing while you're doing it. About you. The next spot is where the eyebrow comes down here, where your temples are, right in here where the eyebrow is. So I might as well tap both sides. And I'm gonna say, I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. Okay? So that's gonna be the routine. I think there's nine different spots on our body that we're going to tap. And we're gonna say something positive about ourselves. So why don't you say, if you can't think of anything, I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. The other thing though, is that we're going to tap it a certain way. We're going to tap it in groups of three. So it'll be like this. One, two, three, rest. One, two, three, rest. One, two, three, rest. Okay? Until we get our statement out. So here I go. <laughs> I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. You got that little routine, little rhythm? I managed to do it. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. I did it in threes. Okay, now the, the third spot is right below your eye on the bone there. So there's your eye and there's the bone. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. Let's try that again. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. Okay, that's the next one. So we've got number one, number two, number three. And now we're going to move down to right below our nose, above our lip. So I'll just use one hand for this. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. Try it again with the other hand. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. Three taps. All right. The next one is below the bottom lip and above the chin. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. I like it when you say the statement, the positive affirmation out loud. It helps your ears, you can see it with your eyes, you can feel it. Let's try it again here, I'll use this hand. Below the lower lip, above the chin. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. Hmm. So we went inside, above the nose, inside eyebrow. Number two, outside eyebrow. Below the eye, number three nose, lip, upper lip, number four, chin, above the chin, number five. Okay, so in your collarbone here, your chest, your collarbone, there's a little bit of an indentation there. I want you to take your index finger and your thumb and make it wide like that and try to put it on the bone. There's a little soft spot. So it's, I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. Or if you want to use the fingers and go into about that spot, soft spot, that distance apart on the bone, I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. Let's try it again. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. And the next spot is underneath your armpit. Not right in the armpit, but just in the bottom part here. There's my chest armpit. So I'm going to go, I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. You don't have to hit yourself when you tap really hard. It can be soft too. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. Again on this side, I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. Someone asked me once, when they think up their affirmation, their positive statement about themselves, if they don't believe it, will this work? Of course it will. Your brain um, is an emotional organ, but it, in this particular case, it's, it's just doing what you say and it's making that 
neuron connection and it's just it's great. Okay? And it doesn't matter what you could say. Um, I help all kinds of people and I'm a great person. I'm a great cook and I'm feeding the people in my family or, or whatever. But we're into exercise today. So we've got the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the top of your head, right in the middle. Doesn't matter if, if you, you could use both hands. Let's try this. Lately, I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. Hmm. One hand. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. I exercise every day and, when it make, and it makes me feel wonderful. I didn't do it again because I goofed what I was saying. Focus. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. And then the last one, I think it's number nine, it's your karate chop, you know, with the inside of your hand here below the baby finger. It's right there. So it's, I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. I exercise every day and it makes me feel wonderful. So let's just count them again. Let's count them backwards this time. So we have number nine, number eight, number seven, number six, number five, four, three, two, one. So just to re review here, we found a hard chair. We did a little pelvic tilt, so we're sitting up nice and tall. Our shoulders are back and down a little bit, so we can push them back and let them relax. Try to keep them there, because they're right below your, your earlobes, which your head is pushed back a little bit, your chin is on a ledge and it's tucked in, and somebody's pulling the top of your head, and then you're doing all these tapping things. Okay, you got that? really good for stress, especially during, quote, COVID. You could do this every day, as many times a day as you wanted to, whenever you're really stressed. And you can do it anywhere, as long as you're sitting up nice and tall. Why? You need the circulation. You need the blood to all the different parts of your body because you're moving and your brain. All right, part B to this is massage. And we're going to massage a few different parts of our body and in a certain motion. But we're gonna start with the first one, which is the abdomen here. So if you look down at your abdomen, so you have your ribs, which are protecting your lungs, and then your diaphragm is tucked underneath here for breathing, which brings in oxygen because of that breathing into your nose and the mouth. And then you got your organs in here. You have your uh, intestines, your small and your large intestines and a bunch of other organs, the liver, the stomach, and the pancreas, the uterus, the ovaries, if you're a female, all that's right in there. And we need to massage that, especially the large intestine. So you're gonna start on the right-hand side with the palm of your hand, and you're gonna come up, right about where your belly button is, but on the right, you're gonna come up a little bit, underneath your ribs, or your, um, yeah, your ribs across there and then down the left side underneath the belly button and back up. So that's, it's really, uh, if you look at a clock on your belly, it's really uh, clockwise circle using the palm of your hand. So I'm not really adding any pressure just yet, but if I wanted to, if I was bloated, I had just eaten maybe some gassy food, um, grapes, cabbage, broccoli, stuff like that, um, this would help with the digestion. And you might even find that after you're done this massage, you might have to go to the bathroom. But anyway, if you push a little harder, if you can handle it with no pain, that's even better. 
using my fingers and the palm of my hand. All right, now, if you want to use the other hand to do it, you can. You still go in the same direction, following the intestines, the large intestines. Okay, now I use coconut uh, oil. It's a, like a paste, it's like a, it's, it's not Vaseline, but it's coconut oil, anyway. And sometimes I get like a bar of coconut soap it's not soap, it's just a bar of coconut that's hard, and I put my hands on it, and my, the heat from my hands makes it warm, and it gets kind of like um, all over my hands. It's perfect for massage. You won't have any problems sliding your palm in that direction. If your skin is dry and clammy, it's kind of, you know. And can you do this lying down? You can do it lying down, but today we're all about sitting up nice and tall. We did our tapping and now we're doing our massage. It doesn't matter which hand you use. The pressure's up to you. Okay? Now, some people might say, well, when you come up the right side, underneath your ribs, when you go down, instead of going all the way down to below your belly and then coming across, you could go on a diagonal because that's really your large intestines direction. So I go up the right side, underneath the ribs, and when I get over onto the left, I push down across my belly button. All right? Okay, good. The next one are these legs here. These quads are really, really, really big muscles that you use all day long for lots of things. <laughs> lots of things. Lifting, walking, all kinds of stuff. So they're really important. And they get kind of tight because, especially if you sit around a lot like this and just watch TV, drive your car, talk to people, and you don't get up and move very much, these things will get shorter. And then when you want to move and walk, they kind of hurt because you're stretching them and they're, not, they're saying, hey, aren't we supposed to be sitting down? So we're going to massage our quads with our hands and our fingers are spread apart and we're using this pad here in the palm to really, really push the muscle. Pull back, push, pull back. Push, get the fingers really wide, push, pull, push. How many times? Well, if you've got all day, go ahead. It'll feel great. You won't have to pay anybody $100 an hour to massage you. You can do it yourself. If you have bare legs, you can get that palm um, paste or oil on your hands. Good work. And then, of course, we have the hamstrings, which are the complementary muscle, which are right underneath your quads, the back of your legs, between your knees and your hips, right? So we're going to squeeze them. So we're going to go like this, squeeze them under there. So right in the middle, I'm just going to squeeze, let go, squeeze, let go, squeeze, let go. Oh, squeeze, let go. I can dig my fingers right into the hole hamstring squeeze. So I'm squeezing in the middle and maybe up a little higher. The middle again and then down closer to the tendons near the back of my knees. Good work, good work. And then the last part of our massage here is going to involve a little tapping, but we're going to use both hands and we're going to kind of slap or tap with our hands, both at the same time. We're going to slap the sides of our legs, both at the same time. Then we're going to slap one leg with both hands at the bottom below the knee, right where your gastrocnemius calf muscle is, and the other one. That's what you're slapping, the sides of your legs and hitting that calf muscle. Okay, you got that? Now we're going to stand up. I'll get the chair out of the way so you can see. Then I'm going to slap my bum. Then I'm going to squeeze it. Slap it. Then squeeze it. Slap it. 
and squeeze it. Slap it. And squeeze it. Right, 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 good. Good work. Okay? No, we didn't slap anything up here. We did a lot of tapping at the top of our body and a lot of massaging at the bottom of our body, but we started with the abdomen where the large intestine is. Okay? Do that as often as you want. Good for stress, good for lots of other things, especially your brain muscle connection. It's time for another drink. We're doing some frozen statues. So we're gonna put our body in certain positions and then we're gonna hold it and be so frozen that if somebody came by, they would think we were like a mannequin in a store window, we were so still. But just because this is our first time, we're only going to do this for about 10 seconds for each. And we're only doing three. Okay, there's lots of different positions and if you've done any exercising with me before in some of the other videos, you would have seen the other uh, frozen statue um, strike a pose positions, but we're only doing three, okay? And the first one, because um, we could listen to music, but what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna ask you to find a window or a door and hold the, the frozen statue by looking outside, look at something outside. It helps you with your brain, body, connection and focus, okay? So I'll just look out that window up there and I'm gonna get my legs wider than shoulder apart. I'm gonna sit into the imaginary chair and I'm gonna grab onto the world with both hands, fingers spread, and it's up there and I'm gonna look at it. It's called the Charles Atlas and we're gonna hold it for 10 seconds as we look out the window, go. Ten. Good. Relax. That's the Charles Atlas. And you can hold it for 20 seconds, a minute, as long as you want. The longer you hold that, the better it is. Let's just do it one more time so you know what we're doing here with our body. So our legs are farther than your hips apart. And my toes are kind of pointing straight ahead. A little bit of a, an angle there, but not much. I'm going to sit in the chair. My back's pretty straight, but my tailbone is pushing back, okay, there's an arch in my back, and I'm going to reach up and grab the world, thank goodness Trump is not running the world anymore, and I'm going to stare out the window, there's a birch tree out there I'm looking at, my head is sort of looking at the world, and I'm going to count to ten in my head, go. Good, relax, that's called the Charles Atlas. The second one is the figure four. If you need to do this in your chair, you can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it standing up first, and then I'm gonna do it in my chair. It doesn't matter to me, but you're gonna choose something outside to look at. So I'm gonna balance on one foot here as I get my other foot above my knee. And that creates the figure four. And then I'm going to cross my arms and touch my shoulders and sit in the chair, the imaginary chair, sit back into my hips a little bit, look out the window, and go up to 10 in my head. That's the figure four. If that's way too hard, let's sit down in the chair. I'll do the other side in the chair. So I'm sitting up nice and tall on the edge of the chair here, make hard chair, I'm gonna bring this ankle above this knee to create the figure four. Now my knee is way up high, that means my ankle, or my ankle, it means my hip is um, a little stiff and it needs to get some uh, some movement and in, in oxygen into it, blood into it. So I'm going to try to push it down a little bit here, just a little bit, and then maybe I'll use my other hand too and push it down and hold that. Look out the window. I love trees. I'm looking at a birch tree. Okay. Let's try the other side sitting down. Where's my birch tree? Don't move. That's tough work. 
That's the figure four. And then the last one is a Cook's hookup. This is probably one of the most popular brain gym exercises you could possibly do. It turns on all kinds of parts of your brain and makes you smarter, more alert, and does all those things I mentioned at the beginning. So I'm gonna stand with one leg in front of the other, but beside the other one. So I take the one leg and I cross over the other leg and put the foot beside the other one. Now I'm not gonna fall over here. Yep, that feels okay. So my feet are together, one is crossed over. If I took the right one and crossed it over, take the right hand and cross it over, and then grab your fingers and put it on your heart, and then close your eyes, think good things, Say that thing in your head about how wonderful you are again if you want, or just think good things, things that make you happy. And then stop talking, Robert, and let's just be as still as possible for 10 seconds. Your eyes are shut. You know what, that's not easy. Just to positive thinking. Just to think positive things is tough. You have to really focus, okay? Untangle yourself. So Mr. Cook invented this years and years and years ago. It's great for your kids, just before they want to tackle a really, really hard math question or do some reading and understand all those words or be focused, get them to do a cook's hookup. So take the one leg, put it over top of the other, and put the feet beside each other. And since that's the left over the right, I'll take the left over the right, I'll grab my fingers, put it on my heart, close my eyes, think something positive. Good work. That's the cook's hook up okay it's time for another drink we're going to finish off today with getting down onto the floor and getting back up remember this is a brain gym workout today There's lots of crossovers happening when you do brain gym Lots of really, really slow moving and sometimes fast moving. There's patterns. You gotta think about what you're gonna do or you won't be able to get it, get it right. And um, getting down on the floor, well, we, we know how to get down on the floor. It might not be easy, but we know how to do it. Um, and we're gonna do it a certain way. So I have a mat down there. I don't know if you're in your living room or where you are, but we're not gonna stay down there long. We're just gonna get down and get back up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to stand with my feet shoulder width apart. And as remember that one exercise where my hands came out to the side and then went overhead, my arms went overhead, and then I hinged and I tried to touch my fingers to the ground and keep my legs really straight. If you can't do that, you can bend at the knee a little bit if you have to, but touch the ground with your palms so my legs are bent. And then I'm going to step back until I can get my knees down. And then I, my feet are um, shoulder width apart and my toes are curled under. So the balls of my feet. Are, and then I'm going to sit up, stand like this, straighten myself up. And then I'm going to go back down and sit on the side of my hip and then right down. Come around to the, like this. Go to the other side, get back over, so I'm on my knees, my toes are curled, back up like this, good, put my palms down again, push my heels down, is this a downward dog? Could be, because I'm walking my fingers back to my toes and coming all the way up slowly. So that exercise we did before where we do a bend for health, and touch the floor and then come back up. It's in there. Let's try it again. So we go up like this very slowly. We do our bend for health where our fingers and our palms are eventually going to touch the floor and our legs are straight. But you know what? Because of my low back, I'm going to have to bend my legs at the knees and put my palms down 
and then get my walk my feet back a little bit and then get my knees down on the mat or the floor keep my toes curled push off come up come back down let my hip lower to the floor bring my legs around to the front go the other way over here come back up on my knees my legs are shoulder width apart my toes are curled there come back up palms go down push my heels back walk my hands into my toes and here i am with the bend for help coming back up one more time i'm not going to talk i'm just going to do it you can watch me and then pause and then try it or you might might be able to do this okay here we go We can call that getting down and getting up. So have a really good day. Maybe go back through the video and see what you really like and then practice that often, maybe every day. See you next time. It's time for another drink.